Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and welcome to the show, y'all. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you about this brother named Mac Ridge, right, that um, he had burnt the bridges with his family. He had done so many things, been in and out of jail so much, that they had just washed their hands of him. They had gotten tired of him because every time he goes to prison, he does the same thing. He starts selling drugs, sending money home, and then when he gets out, he takes this money, blows this money, and then he starts to steal from his people, lying to his people to get money. They bought, loan him the money. He never pays it back. So they just got tired of it. So this time they were telling him, look, we're not going to be there for you for those types of things. If you're going to be selling drugs in there, you need to find somebody else to be dealing with and all of these other types of things because we're not going to do that. You can call here. You know what I'm saying? We got your back. If somebody does something to you in there, we'll call downtown and talk to them about that for you. But we're not going to be involved in any, any of your criminal activities. That's the end of that. You feel what I'm saying? So that upset him. That upset him. He didn't understand where his parents was coming from. And so he tried to get his sister to do it. His sister told him the same thing. The whole family was on board with not being there to participate in the illegal activities, right? So what happened is this. Reg runs into some people, right? He runs into some people that they're not affiliated, but they're getting money. See, he didn't want people that were affiliated because he didn't want everybody in his business. And plus, if something were to go wrong, the family would be making a decision about that. But he felt like if he dealt with some peons, he could use the idea, the fact that he belongs to the GD over them to make them stay in line. Because he wanted them to believe that if something went wrong, his brothers is going to take care of that. And initially that worked. Initially that worked. So here's the thing. What happened in this story is that Reggie had a plug on the town, right? He didn't really trust the plug, but the plug just wanted to make money. The plug just wanted to make money. And as long as the plug was making money, he didn't give a, he didn't care what was really going on as long as he made money. So at the end of the day, here we go. Reg is sending his money home to the plug to get that work. He the work is the, the plug is dropping the work off to the mule so the mule can get it in. Now the mule is related to the peons. The mule is related to the peons. So the peons are really instrumental to Reg being able to pull this off. Reg has got the plug on the dope. Reg has got the plug on the dope. So the peons are appreciating that, but they're the ones getting the dope in. Now Reg, when when the first pack comes in, he bumps down on them. He's like, look, can you help me out? Give me a card to put the money on so we can all keep this. We don't want nobody in our business. So they look at him, the two peons, they look at him and they're like, well, all right, but, you know, you need to be taking care of your own business. I don't want my people having to be responsible for taking care of your money. Now, one of the peons later on, when they were by themselves, he said, look, he ain't got nobody to really help him. We're going to end up taking all of this, take the plug and everything. Because he ain't really got nothing. So they both decided to help him out. Buy some time. Get to know the plug. Because it was their females that were going by picking up the dope. It was their females that were putting it up inside of them and bringing it into the institution. It was their move. It was their move. Reggie just had the plug on the dope. That's all he had. But he needed them, and for the time being, they needed it. So they worked well together for a while, or so Reggie thought. They were getting it. Sometimes they were moving. They getting an ounce or two every other week, and they rolled. It got to be so good that they started to have to get an ounce every week. To keep it moving, they had to get an ounce every week. Because the, every other week, I mean, when I say week, I mean the weekends on visit, that wasn't enough. Once they were established, dope boys in the penitentiary, customers were just coming. So they had to increase the volume to keep up with the demand. You understand? So they were getting their money. And after a while, they had to get multiple cards for Reggie. 
Why? Because on these cards, you can only put so much. You feel me? And then it gets suspicious. They lock the cards up and all this and that, right? It's different than back in the day where you can get money orders and then you can send the money orders to the house. And all. It's different. It's different. These cards, you got to take the money out before they lock the card up or somebody report that their money was stolen trying to get over on you. You know what I'm saying? So they can get a free card again from the, from the people that do that and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to mess up your car because if you mess up your car, you ain't got nowhere to put the money. You ain't, you ain't in the dope business. You ain't in the dope business. So here we go. They doing all the work for Red. They got these multiple cards. And Red, you got about 15 racks. Doing good. So every now and then, he would ask them to ask their girls could they order him a package. They would do that. But they never, they never let him talk to the girls. They never let him do anything like that. They never let him do anything like that. So they kept on pushing making the money, doing what they were supposed to be doing. But they never let him in on the intimate parts of it. They never let him talk to their girls. They never let him understand and, and, and really appreciate how to work these cards and all this and that. They never let him get on their phone, you know, because they still use the black box. The, when I say the black box, that's the state phone or the blue box. They never let him do any of that kind of stuff. Never let him do any of that kind of stuff. So at the end of the day, what they were doing is making sure that when the time came, and it always does, that they were going to be in, in charge of everything. Now, they had already told their females to start hollering at the plugs on the dope just to make sure that they were going to be always able to do this with or without Reggie. With or without Reggie. Even though Reggie was still in touch with the plugs, the plugs were nurturing the relationship with the individuals that were bringing it in. Now, they never crossed the line with the females or anything like that, and the females never crossed the line with them because that's not what they were on. What they were trying to do is to make sure that they were going to be able to take care of that man that was locked up, not Reggie. So here's what happened. One day, Reggie got caught up tripping, playing games. And at the end of the day, Reggie got locked up, went to the hole. And when he went to the hole, he found himself in a situation where he called his family, talked to them, but he couldn't get them to do anything with the money. He wanted them to allow him to have those cards dropped off at the house. And they were like, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So Reggie wrote a note to the compound, to the two peons, and asked the two peons if they could put some money on his book so he could get compensated while he was still in the hole because he didn't know how long he was going to be there. They took care of it. They put some money, had their girls put some money on his account. He was able to get his commissary. So he started thinking, maybe I can't trust them. Maybe I can trust them. So at the end of the day, he's looking at it like, okay, I'm straight. So when the internal affairs come in the back and they talk to Reggie, they tell Reggie, look here, you're not getting out. We heard you've been distributing cocaine all over our compound. You're not getting out. So they wrote him up. Gave him some whole time, maxed him out. When you get maxed out in the penitentiary, especially in Tennessee, you're going you're gonna to do anywhere from one to five years on max. It just depends on the citizens of what it was that you get put on max for. So now Red is sitting back there, and now he got all this money. Now the peons, they've heard about what happened. Now keep in mind, I told you that he didn't even want folks in his business, so now he's trying to get at folks in him and tell folks in him, look, y'all get my money. And he tells them how much it is, 15 racks. Minus what they done put on his books. So folks done thinking about, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute, $15,000? Go get that. So they bump down on the peons. And the peons tell them, no, that's not true. He got $5,000. Now you got to keep in mind, folks them say $5,000. See, because they're already plotting. It's free money to them. It's free money. So the peons, they give them three cards. that's got a total of $5,000 on it. $5,000. And he, they tell folks that they got the money. They tell folks that they got the money. But it's going to cost them. They won't have it. And he tell them, no, that ain't it. So they go back to the peons. They push him. The peons tell them, no, man. No. That's all he had. And I gave that to y'all. So they ain't finna be pushing on these peons because they gave them $5,000. You feel me? They wanted to make sure, but they gave him $5,000. Now they finna get $2,500 for nothing. 
for nothing. So they send the twenty five hundred to folks books. They had a guy send twenty five hundred folks books. They keep the other half. They, they keep it moving. He kindly telling them to go get the rest of his money. They's like, no, nah, it ain't gonna happen, Cap. It ain't gonna happen. We're not gonna be doing that. You got yours. That's all they say you had. That's that on that. So now he's writing them, threatening them, this, that, and the third. And they see the folks that ain't finna come back out. They see folks that ain't finna come back out. So they step to folks and say, look, man, y'all want to get some money. We got this move. So Reggie tries to call the plug on the streets. Plug ain't listening. Plug trying to get money. Because they done already told him, he in the hole, man. They done burnt him. He in the hole. He trying to mess everything up. The plug on the streets just wants to get money. He ain't trying to hear. He's not loyal to Reggie. He's loyal to the game, his pocket. So he pushing like that. So they keep doing business. Now folks them getting money. And the peons, they got to keep 10 racks, right at 10 racks that didn't belong to them. Why do I tell you this story? Why do I tell you this story? I tell you this story because I know some of y'all think you're going to be able to come up in here and you're going to be able to shake it. And when you come up here and you think you're going to be able to shake it, it ain't going to end the way you think it's going to end. It ain't going to end the way you think it's going to end. Think about that. It's been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. I've been trying to breathe underwater.